If you're interested in getting your replays analyzed, please read my pinned comment below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Your May has pushed the ball forward, don't go for back boost and create distance. Immediately turn around and grab pads and stay next to May. You could have even grabbed mid boost. Example. So here we showed two pathing options that would have been much better than going for corner boost. You don't need to flip into this ball as it just keeps you stuck in animation and you can't follow the ball. Here are a couple of options you could have done instead. Number one, you could have done a single touch into a wave dash or you could have done a moxie recovery touch instead. Example. Option one as mentioned is the single touch into wave dash and option two is the moxie recovery. I believe you could have scored this if you had the confidence to full boost the moment your mate hits the ball. You'll be able to see that the opponent's nose is not facing the correct way, which means he's awkward. Example. As you can see, we just full boost after mate's hits and we can see the opponent's nose is not correct. So we follow up with a shot on net. Just a bit too slow as first man. Your mate cleared the ball and you're not closing down the opponent. In fact, it looks like you're letting him do what he wants. Get closer and apply pressure. Example. Here, we close down the space and read how the opponent wants to hit the ball and we are able to get a decent dunk on him. And now this ball is somewhat awkward to deal with and because you're positioned awkwardly it becomes difficult for your mate to know if he should stay or go. Good that you don't turn away from the 50, I like that. When the ball is awkward like this, it's often best to immediately swing wide if possible to make it less awkward to deal with. Obviously, this means it takes less time for you to get to the ball, which, which could result in a shot. But if you observe the situation, you can see both opponents after the 50 and you know where they are and how quickly they can get to the ball. Example. We take a wide swing and we have full view of everything and we can decide to take a touch, boom or pop into an aerial. Good demo dodge here. A bit risky to go for corner boost here, you needed to wrap around back post as soon as possible in case they pass it down mid for the shot. Seems like you have a habit of turning on car cam whenever you speed flip. Try to stop that habit if you can. No need for boost. Pathing through pads towards me would have given you enough boost and allowed you to stay in the play more. Your mate messed up which puts you in an awkward position, but you going for corner boost and leaving the play equally put yourself in an awkward position too. Great touch and clear. Don't jump for this especially with no boost. The only time you would jump for this is if the opponent is already up and you can 50 him. Here, what you do is you scan the field and you'll see that the opponent is far away. Then you tell your duo mate to take the ball and he'll aerial and take control as you drive down the wall. Great 10. I've noticed you have good teammate awareness when they're about to hit the ball. Your mate took a bad touch here, but
but you didn't really do anything to position for the oncoming shot. The moment your mate took that bad touch, you should know that a shot is incoming and try your best to position accordingly. Example. The moment we notice our mate takes a bad touch, we instantly cover mid for a shot on net. And here, we manage to pre-flip to get a touch on the ball into the corner. I understand you have no boost, but I still think you can cover a bit further forward to increase your coverage. Here, you're only covering the near post, but not the pass. You needed to push further out to cover the pass too. Example. So we do exactly what you did, but you just push out further in case they pass mid. I'm not sure why your mate felt the need to touch that ball when it wasn't even much of a threat. Plus you probably needed to tell him that you have no boost because he might have wanted to knock his ball down to you. Turning away makes sense, but what happens if he takes a soft touch down into a dribble and flicks? then it becomes difficult to deal with because you're giving him too much space. Here, we will see an example from the opponent's POV and what could happen from you giving him too much space. Example. Opponent's POV. So here, we can see how much time the opponent will have to take down the ball and potentially flick it. So what should we do? We need to close down the space which will force him not to take his time and force a giveaway. Example. Here, we close the gap down and stop a potential dribble. And we don't have to be too afraid of a shot on target since the angle and the speed of the car tells us that it's hard to shoot on net. And now we can just track the ball until they force it away. I like how you stayed in the play here and showed presence and got rewarded for it. You need to get closer to me and support whatever play he's trying to do. Again, I know you're low boost, but try to flip and grab hearts and stay close. Example. We get closer to me and your mate should get an extra touch on this ball, whether it's a 50 or a dunk. And if they don't, it's not on you because it's definitely possible to do it from his aerial. Your job is to push closer to prepare for his dunk. In this case, your mate doesn't get the dunk and it does put you in an awkward position, but you did your job correctly. I like the bump here. A bit of a panic flip here. No need since the ball isn't really threatening. Unlucky, great save by the opponent. Don't do this. If you go past mid and your mate is still attacking, just rotate through mid pads and support. If you go back for corner boost, you risk creating a big distance between you and the play. So if your mate loses the ball, you're back on your own in a potential 1v1 or 2v1. Example. So here, there's no mid boost, so we turn into the play, grab a couple of pads, and we play this ball that flies over to our side. And this distance does cost your team the goal, although your mate should have saved the shot. The moment you got that dunk and the ball popped, you should be demoing the guy in net. Always think about how you can maximize your usefulness before rotating out. And if you did demo that opponent, 
That ball goes in and it's a goal. There's no need to be turning away here like this. Your mate just boomed the ball pretty hard to their side. It's literally not possible for them to convert that shot into a threatening play. Face the play and get ready for the save. Okay, you probably already know this, but we complicated the shot a lot here. Just single jump, no air roll and shoot normally. Good positioning. A common mechanical mistake champs make in aerials is that they jump way too early to try and reach the ball. You can reach the ball much quicker if you drive along the ground first and then aerial. Example. Drive a bit more with boost and then you can aerial with good speed to reach the ball quicker. You can't afford to go for boost here because your mate is in a 1v1 and I believe you had an opportunity to grab mid pads to help your mate. Example. We immediately try and get back through mid pads and we fortunately get the save in time to help mate. Okay, this turnaround makes sense because your mate 50 the ball at the last second. The problem, however, is that you turn the wrong way. You're turning to cover the boom in case your mate misses, but you're not covering the scenario if he 50s. The correct turn is to turn right because that way you cover the boom, but you also cover the 50, which is likely to fly to the right side based on your mate's position. The moment you see your mate flip out of rotation, it's cue for you to speed up and challenge. Instead, we're a bit too slow on the challenge and can give the opponent time to potentially outplay us. Example. Once mate flips for mid boost, we go fast and apply pressure because we know our mate is ready to pick up any second ball. Good positioning, but I do feel as though you turn away a bit too much whenever your mate is about to get challenged. Sometimes you just need to take a look at the challenge and decide whether it requires you to turn away or not. Again, you turn away too much. Look at your nose position. It's away from what's happening. You play the 50, which is fine, but if you kept your nose straight and tried to get to the ball as quickly as possible, I believe you could have scored. Plus, you're losing by two goals, so it's fine to be risky in trying to score. Example. So here, we keep the nose straight and we try to score. It's definitely possible. You needed to cut into the ball here so you can take it into midfield and make it play like a flick or something else. It's fine going into midfield and getting challenged because your mate will pick up the second ball. Example. So here we cut into the ball into midfield and we make a play. This is much more effective than going down the corner. A bit of a misread, but that can happen to anyone.
Okay, so my final considerations for this video is going to be number one, try your best not to turn your nose away from challenges and 50s, try to keep it pointing towards the challenge itself. Number two, try to improve your decision making, such as when to take a shot or when you should 50. And lastly, don't stray away from the play to get boost. Stay near your mate as often as you possibly can.